Welcome to the Commentary Booth, where we watch, and you guessed it, commentate on the week that was in movies and TV. My name is Jamie Apps, and I'm your host and play-by-play -play commentator. Each week, I'll be joined by a rotating cast of colour commentators to help you find your next viewing treat. This week, I'm joined by a freelance social commentator who was her favourite movie as American Psycho and favourite TV show as Peaky Blinders. Welcome back to the show, Blake Robinson. Thank you for having me. Here we are. We're back. Yep. A brand new year. How's everything going? Uh, yeah. We'll see. It's a long road ahead. <laughs> it's a... I think we said like, I think we said what twelve months ago onwards and upwards twenty twenty one, but it just just didn't happen, did it? <laughs> it, it? Yeah. It looked promising, and then it just. Uh derailed we'll pretty pretty significantly <laughs> derailed yeah. is the word to use <laughs> like we were going fine until we hit about june and then just Didn't that go part pitch, of the though. year back half of the year not good at all a real mare of a year but we do what we do best that's yep. provide Did expert comments on things and sit around and watch TV and movies because you can't do anything else. So, uh, how right there's plenty of stuff to do. It's just I don't want to do it at the moment. And uh, <laughs> yeah, holidays. Oh, I'm just in the shop. The shop. Full holiday mode already. It's been horrendous. Yeah, these few weeks. Oh, it's not safe to do anything. Yep, it's all about the, <laughs> the Amazon there's Amazon nothing. deliveries. Yeah, yeah. See, I never got around the Amazon. I've actually just re-signed up to Amazon Prime. Oh yeah, I've never well, ever, ever ordered anything off Amazon. Is it? Is it? Well, that's the thing. Goods or what? I, I subscribe to Amazon Prime purely for Prime Video to get all the movies mm. and TV and stuff. And then I was like, well, if I've got this and I've got free shipping, I might as well take advantage of it. Like, I'm going to buy something if Amazon have it. But honestly, and it's like never browsed on Amazon to buy something. Yeah, a lot of the time they'll have everything you're looking for. Like, and most of the time it's the cheapest price you'll find. So mm. I, I would yeah, hack that up, the free shipping if you got an account. Mm. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah, like if you've got an account for the video, you get free shipping on everything. So, And it's yeah, like it's cheap, express yeah. shipping. I ordered a set of lights for in here and I ordered them on Monday or Tuesday and they came today. So. Really? And it's really like a warehouse Wednesday. around here? Sydney, there is it? Yeah, South Sydney, I think. Big one. So like they, they left the warehouse last night. They arrived in Nara at four thirty this morning and then they were here. That's incredible. Five thirty. So. Perfect. At this time of year too. <laughs> yeah, I was their original <laughs> predicted delivery was next Friday, so for them to come today I was pretty I sure. actually had grave concerns for all Couriers Australia Post at this time of year, but they've actually been pretty good. And I've been very impressed. All hands on deck, must be. Yeah, they seem to be working pretty hard, and they'll it's good. It's definitely good. deserved deserve their holidays when they finally get them this year. Yeah, oh, I've got <laughs> nothing but nothing but the highest praise for the <laughs> couriers and Australia Post. They're my people. The amount of online shopping I do, oh, they yeah. are my people. I'm pretty sure my Amazon guy today hated me because he had to deliver. A case of soft drink, two sets of lights, oh, yeah. two sets of like tripod poles. He was just like, oh, Jesus, it's like four packages that he had to get out of the truck. Oh, well, wait, wait until you get on a first name basis. Maybe, maybe next Christmas you're on the Christmas, you'll be on the Christmas card list. Yep. Um. So outside of all Christmas shopping and holiday enjoying, what have you been checking out recently? Wow. Well. I did just mention I signed up for Amazon and that was actually to watch this uh, highly anticipated uh, documentary about the great Von Dutch. Now everyone is, everyone's familiar with Von Dutch. All right. I, of like early 2000s, maybe a bit of Paris Hilton fame, Justin Timberlake wearing the trucker hat fame, all that. Anyway, so I got this real recommendation about this documentary that's popped up that's flown under the radar. So it's just pretty much the origin of the brand and a lot of myself included, a lot of people just didn't realize the controversy 
around it. So there's basically like three or four guys that claim to have started it. Oh, and um, they were all pretty, pretty badass dudes at the time. Um, so yeah, it was pretty much started in the early 2000s in like Southern California around like Santa Monica, Venice around there by, well, one of the guys is claiming to is a big, big time LA drug dealer, um, Mike Cassell. So he's, he's the one that's claiming to, but then he sort of sold it off to these other guys who had the namesake, like, uh, Bobby Vaughan was another guy who's claiming to do it. And, uh, Tony Sorensen, he's was a, um, like this big time business type and an investor who put money in it. So these are like the three guys who are there all, um, t- sort of take turns and in interviewing in this little documentary. And, and it's just crazy mind blowing how <laughs> the, the, like, the, the, the backstory of this. Yeah. It seems weird that like there's multiple people claiming ownership of it. Like you would think someone would have the copyrights and trademarks they, in like, their name. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Well, there's the guys that started it and everyone knows they started, but then there's the guys that sort of bought the rights for it and they're claiming it's theirs, but no, one, like everyone just wants to claim it as theirs because it just, it got way too big for it, it's like too early. They didn't plan on it, like it taking off like it did. <laughs> yeah, um, well, I guess if almost, Paris Hilton starts rocking your gear, it's going to explode pretty quick especially back yeah well, they just got late 90s they just got celebrity endorsements and connections like just linked up with the, the right people and it just got it took off and they couldn't they couldn't make the product fast enough for the demand and um i think one of the one of the big things that touched on uh tommy lee as well so one of the guys that was um claiming to start von dutch he was friends with pamela anderson's little brother then he sort of linked him up with Pamela Anderson. Then at the time, Pamela Anderson was dating Tommy Lee. Then he started partying with Tommy Lee. Then he was at Tommy's house, like his, like his, I don't know, what did he call it? Um, it was like a, like a playboy sort of house, but it had, it had a funny name for, like, for to suit Tommy Lee. Anyway, he was there partying and the next morning they were shooting MTV Cribs at Tommy Lee's place. And he's like, Hey, chuck this t- just chuck this von dutch t-shirt on wire would you like while they're filming and it sort of like took off from there that's like the first sort of big bit of coverage they got yeah well mtv when they were doing cribs was massive so that was like everybody yeah, would watch like, yeah, that peak yeah peak mtv and everyone's like what is this brand he's wearing and um yeah that, before that they were like losing millions and millions of dollars a year then they started making upwards of like two hundred million dollars a year, and they're like, "We just need to start doing something unique." And that's when they started just putting a patch on a trucker hat, and the rest was history. But it's um, yeah, it's what it's like a true crime. It's almost like true crime. This little three part series, like everything that happened, I was like, "You are kidding me!" Like it was just so. It was just like I said, it was just a bunch of bad dudes that started it, and. There's like the whole time it's sort of like a bit of a murder investigation as well because yeah, it's just <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah, like the recommend the guy that recommended it to me, he was just in disbelief as well. I, I was listening on a podcast, and um, yeah, they're just everyone's just mind blown by it. No, yeah, it's, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Where this yeah, it sounds started. like it, it sounds like it starts off as like a a business done good story and then it just takes this weird turn yeah it was just don't like some knock, knock around guys wanting to make some like grease monkey sort of clothing then yeah like i said they got too big for their boots and sort of when you put money in the hands of guys that <laughs> probably shouldn't have that much money these things just happen um how yeah. long are the episodes yeah. you said there's three episodes it's like, yeah i think they're yeah, just our episodes maybe about that yeah three one hour episodes Okay, and what's the full title of the show? Uh, the Curse of Von Dutch. Um, it's got another little slogan behind it. Yeah, it's, it's exclusive like Amazon and Hulu. Yeah, The Curse okay. of Von Dutch, A Brand to Die For. So yeah, it's all in the title, A Brand to Die For. So yeah, those guys getting shot here and there. Yeah, okay. it's like almost true crime. 
so it touches like it starts out like it shows you the origin of where everything come from then everyone's sharing their conflicting stories and how they think it started but at the same time it's like a bit of a murder investigation <laughs> Yeah, it sounds yeah, like it has like so just enough just to so cover like a broad badass. audience. Yeah, it was very entertaining. If you're looking for like, like a fashion documentary or like a documentary about the clothing side of things, this is probably not for you. But it's um, if you want something a bit, a bit grungy and a bit um, a bit badass, this is this is this is a fun one. Very, okay. very well, informative. I might add that to the holiday watch list now yeah, that work's sort of winding it's, down. It was extremely good. Like it, every every sort of 10, 15 minutes when something happened on, I was like, I was like this, this just keeps getting so much more ridiculous. <laughs> Is it kind of like, like it, a similar feeling to what we had when the original Tiger King came out where like each episode you're like, how can this get more insane? And it somehow does. Pretty much exactly like that yeah like i'm just everything that keeps happening and keep every turn that it takes in the, the history of the brand i'm like what the hell like it's such a like a household name too and you're like just if people will like just don't realize the backstory i meant like all the teenage girls that were wearing von dutch back then <laughs> and they, they just had no idea about the dudes who started this and the blood that was spilt over these hats okay cool yeah definitely add that one too. yeah it's extremely <laughs> informative it's, it's, yeah, it's very um under the radar too. Like I never even heard. Yeah, of like that to a, I, I don't think I've heard many people talk about it. So I think that's nah, a good recommendation to pull out. I think yeah, well, I only come out in November. Okay. Yeah. So well, I guess yeah. Probably, probably hasn't had the chance to take off yet. Yeah, like I guess it's been out for about a month or so. So for it to not take Amazon off, Amazon still isn't. Amazon still isn't that big though. Eh? I don't think people getting yeah, Amazon so that much especially here like i think people do get around it for specific very specific things like they go to watch the boys well, i download it for this those like, amazon they, they, exclusive, has exclusive shows but as far as it's probably not the best for movies is it because well, honestly most movies on there you have to pay five bucks to watch don't you? yeah i think also the way that their um What's os key, is laid out makes page. it hard makes it hard for people as well because you sort of scroll through and you'll find something like, oh, I want to watch that. And then you click on it and there's an extra fee on top. And I think that turns a lot of people off to yeah, just browsing just Amazon the Prime. Little, the little bar that's like included with Prime and then you won't be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, whereas if, if like, I want to watch a movie, if there's a movie I want to watch, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy to pay five bucks just to watch it. It's, it's five bucks to everyone. Especially when I, like I said, it's like an eight, well, it's an $8 a month fee for Amazon. It's not yep. the most expensive. Yeah, I but think, yeah, I think that just not that puts a lot of people off from browsing because like Netflix, people will sit there and just browse through everything because they know anything they find, they can just hit play. Whereas yeah. this Amazon, and Amazon yeah, pulls in a lot of stuff from other services as well. Yeah. So is. like you, you might find something and then click on it and realize, or you'll click on it and pay for it and then you'll go to one of your other subscriptions that you have and see that exact same thing that's totally on there for free and you're like oh well i just wasted money yeah so if i normally at my go-to if i want to watch a movie or something like a certain movie i just google it then it normally pops up like it has all the different services that you can watch it yep is- yeah jackson and i are big advocates for the just watch app you literally just type in what yeah, you want it's just yeah it's just watch that's what comes up on the googles the googles and yeah, it tells you exactly where you can watch it how much it is and whether it's included in the subscription so yeah, it's I think, rare there's something out there. It's not on one of the platforms, but then again, like, yeah. are you, I'm on most now, but. I think, I think yeah, I think that's the big problem with <laughs> Amazon, though. It discourages just browsing through and being like, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll check this out. But yeah, yeah like oh. I, said, I just downloaded Amazon just for this Von Dutch documentary. It was well worth it. Good little find. Hopefully people can check that yeah, out and let us know what they thought. Yeah. Solid. For me, the big thing I watched this week was the new Apple TV exclusive movie uh, called Swan Song, starring Mahershala Ali, who in this movie actually plays two separate roles, which is very weird. Swan Song. 
Yes. Oh yeah. So it's about a, yeah, a husband. A bit quiet lately, hasn't it? Yeah, they've just been focusing a lot on their series recently, and they had a lot of like sort of sci-fi type series. So I think yeah, I've noticed that isn't necessarily up everyone's alley. So that's that can be an issue. But this movie just dropped, and it's about a, a father and husband who finds out that he has a terminal illness and he's going to die like pretty rapidly. Uh, and then he's introduced to a doctor who offers him a solution to this issue. And that is basically to replace himself with an exact clone of himself with all his memories and personality traits, like, injected into its brain, essentially. So it, uh, it feels very much kind of like... Did you ever watch Black Mirror? No, I didn't. Okay, so it's kind of sort of like that where it's this weird sci-fi future where there's all this crazy technology yeah. but instead of it being this dystopian story about the dangers of technology this one's all about uh, a heartfelt emotional story about this guy just trying to prevent his family from going through the devastation of losing him like with he's got a young son his wife's pregnant and it's just like this is not a good time for me to die. So he goes yeah. through this whole process of getting cloned and sort of about him making the decision himself because the doctor even says to him at one point, you have, you have the ultimate power here. Like you either tell your wife that you're going to die and then we can't do this cloning replacement thing because it ruins it. Um, or you decide to do this cloning process and she's none the wiser has no idea that it's happened either way you have to make this decision for her she doesn't have any role in this choice so it's all about him sort of grappling with what to do and whether he himself can give up his family and let this clone basically step in and take over the rest of his the rest of his life or prolong his life well, essentially yeah, I've got it up here. Just trying to get me, uh, get me head around the vibe of it. Yeah, like it's. I really enjoy it. Like it's a really, yeah. I expected it to be a sad movie, and it, it it is sad, but it's also kind of like uplifting at the end, where you go through all the the struggles and pain that he's going through, but in the end, everything sort of works out okay for him. And Mahershal Ali proves once again that he's an incredible actor. Especially it, in the I scenes it stars where the original. Oh, sorry. I'll say it. I'll just say it, I'll say it stars the original um, Cruella de Vil. <laughs> yep. Glenn Close. Yep. But yeah, like where, especially like the scenes where Mahershala Ali is playing himself and the clone and they're having a conversation together. Like that must have been yeah. so, so hard to film because he would have had to do yeah. record one half of the conversation, get changed record the other half of the conversation and then they just edit that together and it's just like i don't know how you do very, that. Um, i mean so so hard very og eddie, eddie murphy vibes <laughs> where he plays like what half the cast in these movies like the nutty professor and, and whatnot yep yeah but like yeah instead of this being just like Classic. a goofy movie like this is like a full-on yeah heartfelt drama and really really good um, i think one of the cool things too is because it's produced by apple it's sort of, some of the tech felt like it was maybe a little glimpse into their future plans for, yeah, like, their, so their phones. Yeah, so it's like. Oh, there you go. They have, There's no doubt it, Apple were somehow taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, in this movie, everyone family. walks around with, everyone walks around with a single earbud in, which kind of is essentially just their phone and everything like communicates to is them directly well i guess it's like a future airport because it's just like a tiny yeah. little bud like it doesn't have the little tail that hangs out of it it's just like a bud that you sit yeah. in your ear and you can hardly even see uh there's contact lenses that have like basically a heads up display so you can see all your messages they have cameras in them so it can record everything you see it's like crazy crazy tech um the cars are all basically just a pod with four seats that pace each other they drive themselves um 
what else was there? So the computers, there's feature length Apple keynote for the year 2040. Yeah. Um, all their computers, they're just like, you just have a keyboard on the desk and then the screen is just like projected in, in front of you and just like hovers and just like seeing the way they had the, the systems like laid out. I was like, that yeah. feels like a big glimpse into future iOS layouts and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. That was a sure, probably I'm really cool part. Fast. Yeah. Really cool part on top of just seeing this really nice story and great um acted movie yeah so what, what's the vibe like is it mainly is it full-on sci-fi or is it pretty much like a feel-good drama and wholesome sort of ending vibe uh yeah just like a full-on drama like this yeah it has like those sci-fi elements obviously because it's the future and they're doing yeah medical procedures well beyond what we can even comprehend but at the moment doesn't but lose that's touch not, of reality. That's not the core of the story. The story is this guy sort of living with this clone for about a week so that he can sort of get a feel for how accurate this clone is. It gets a, yeah. a feel for him and learns about how he interacts and think with things and him sort of coming to terms with, okay, yes, I'm happy for this thing to go and take over my life and move forward with my yeah. family yeah, yeah. sounds cool really cool really really good movie i highly recommend it another anyway, i haven't been on, like i said i've like, been on apple, on apple in a while because i haven't really i haven't seen anything that's appealed to me to pop up yeah like, like, I'll like this never on there. i was like it's apple's apple tv isn't one you just go on to, to yeah it's a, it's a destination place you go to watch something specific yeah. and yeah like amazon like that their TV shows can be sort of hit or miss, but I don't think I've watched one of their movies where I've finished it and been like, that was trash. There's always something What's good that? to come out what of it. What have we got coming? Mosquito Coast. That'll, they're probably obviously doing more of that where they are, but so that's like in the, in the pipe work now. Mm -hmm. um, so Servant is watch. the end of January. Servant, really? Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting about Servant, man. I love Servant. We've spoken um, a lot about Servant on this show. I'm pretty sure there's more Ted Lasso coming. Yeah. Plenty of sure. stuff. That's huge. That's huge in America, that show. Yeah. There's, there's plenty on there on Apple to check out. But yeah, good, good. Highly recommend checking out their movies at least yeah. if you haven't already. Just oh, the production true. values and the stories have been great so far. Yeah, good. Um, and you watch watched a movie as well this week oh man where's anderson ladies and gentlemen he has his new one the french dispatch is out and i am um yeah i was left speechless everyone just, like knows where's for is just completely out there cinematography um set design just quirkiness um yeah if you know where's anderson you know and this is honestly this, is a, this movie is a work of art that belongs in the Met, I reckon. Just cinematography-wise? Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. It's like tragi tragically Wes Anderson too. Like if you do not like a bit of like a quirky movie, like well, what was the last one he put out? The Grand Budapest Hotel. And that, well, even that, that was like really, really well done, but it wasn't like an extreme yeah, out there like piece of where's anderson art yeah but this um this is just incredible let me watch me speechless <laughs> okay so, it's, so it sounds like yeah, it sounds yeah. like the studio has just given him full reign to just yeah, go and do full you i sort of got i sort of got a little bit lost in it and i didn't really get a chance to take too many notes on it because i didn't want to get distracted like couldn't look away for a second but uh yeah he's also known for his um big big time casts and um like cast listings and big names and this one's big flex from all these previous movies like bill murray owen in um owen wilson adrian brody they all get a run just all the ogs wow and um, what's yeah, what's it about exactly me. yeah so um it's basically he dubs it as a love letter to journalists and so it's oh, centered okay. around this french sort of american correspondence newspaper so like an american 
newspaper in but in France and it it's, it's it's sort of split up into three parts so each lot of cast members is in each part of the film and it's pretty much split into thirds to two evenly um so the first one is basically based around like Owen Wilson's I think is sort of the one of the main characters in the first part and it's it's like the final issue of this newspaper and each part is a different story like from a journalist that's writing in the paper and so it's like basically almost like three mini movies put together okay and and but none of them have anything to do with each other <laughs> it's it's really it's real it's real strange one like something you've never seen before <clears throat> and um i just don't know what else to really say <laughs> it was just mind-blowing how it was put together now if it was um, split into those three parts so that wes could like go full art like are they all similar style yeah, or think, do they all have think, sort of a unique feel uh, yeah they're all very unique but they're like you make a good point there i think he um he had all these big ideas um, it's almost like he just wanted to flex his muscles and put them all into one yep and like, yeah so i'd, I'd say it. that's what's and also he just wanted it. maximum maximize the like the cast as well like adrian brody is at his absolute best in this as well it's like they all just come out to play for wes like they just put on their best performances like an Owen, Owen Wilson's like a stalwart for Wes Anderson films too. Like he's just absolutely brilliant. He only plays a very, very small role in like the first part of it too. But yeah, big, uh, big fan of Timothy Chalamet's performance in this. That's sort of like oh. the first real, first real thing I've seen him in. I can't yeah, remember he's, anything else. He's a great actor, but he's kind of like, I think he kind of gets typecast as just like the Hollywood hunk of the, the current times like i yeah, think a lot of people downplay his acting ability they just look at him as like oh he's the hot guy in hollywood at the moment yeah i was so i almost want to go back now and watch a couple of movies that he's been in just because of his performance in this is incredible is that also streaming on amazon or is that on something else it's only in the cinemas i think i don't know it's oh. just coming out in the movies mm. okay. i thought it was streaming on something at the moment I can honestly imagine people would walk out of a cinema. And that's not saying it's bad, but it's just that sort of vibe. Yeah, if you go in there not expecting this, yeah. it could be a bit much. And to give you an idea, I think it, it did release in a lot of sort of Indian independent cinemas first. And I'm not even sure it's even at Hoyts. I've only noticed it at like event cinemas. Oh, I wouldn't. That's weird. But it's full of um, full of Easter eggs too from like previous um, Wes Anderson films. So it's like a big bit of a nerd piece. Which I'm a big okay. Wes Anderson fan. Yeah, I love his work. Yeah, a lot yeah, of I wonder if it, Easter eggs like that. I wonder if that is like an event cinema exclusive. That's very interesting. If it is, normally yeah, cinematic releases, voice. they just want. Yeah. Normally well, cinematics, they just want cinemas, put it yeah, everywhere. Independence. Yeah. But it's definitely worth Ooh. the trip to the, the cinema to watch. It's very good. Yeah, like I was just speechless at it watching it. I was like, this is a proper work of art. It's, it's just yeah. so strange too. But yeah, I really with... like how they split it up into like the three parts. And like then all three had nothing to do with each other except that corresponded back to the all stories within this last edition of the, the newspaper, the French newspaper. Yep. Yeah, especially with... Uh... Uh, the the covid flaring back black up again it's uh important for a movie to be worthwhile if you're gonna risk yeah, going to the cinema is. i um I, th I think i read too that the original idea for this film was meant to be a post-world war ii musical Ooh. which would have been a ball of fun <laughs> oh, and um, like i think the, the, definitely the definitely the timothy chalamet part of this you get that big vibe like post-world war ii musical sort of because he sort of plays like a, a boy activist and protester it's um yeah it's very strange but extremely extremely good 
yeah, it's just given that it's I really just... given that it's sort of split into those three parts. Do you think it works best as a movie, or do you think it would have been maybe oh, better no, to do an to extra series. couple of parts and do as a, a series? Whoa. Nah, because nah, it's, it's definitely perfect as is <laughs> for sure. Because like, I don't know that's but they all flow into each other. Like it doesn't just stop and start again. It, they all just flow into each other, and it just it works. Oh, it's so weird. Okay, yeah, there's no like big hard cuts title sequence nah. next movie no. type thing. It's all like one movie, but it's yeah, it's genius. It's yeah, like I said, <laughs> belongs in the Met. It's brilliant. Okay. 